Hey, thank you guys so much for just taking the time out of your busy schedule to just chop it up with us. Man, I have been a fan of your work for a while, like a while, while. And I owe you, all, you guys, I owe you guys a long thank you. Because oh, okay. if it wasn't for your music, when I was out there doing my thing, hitting them streets, you know, you guys, you guys close the deal a lot of times. I mean, just <laughs> let's just be real, man. Hey, can't stop, ready or not, all the hits. So, uh, thank you so much. But before we jump into this interview, I want people, um, old heads like myself who know who you are, and some of the new people to really get into it. So please give your name, your social media, everything, all after seven, everything. Go ahead, please. All right, this is Keith Mitchell. I'm Kevon Edmonds. I'm Jason Edmonds. You can find us at all social networks at after seven music or at after seven music.com. I mean, you guys, uh, first of all, all right, first of all, I just want to be straight. I am in fanboy mode, so if you hear me kind of like geek out a little bit, this is this is normal. This is I'm trying to hold it in. What you hearing is a guy who's trying to be professional right now. But uh, like I said, I love you guys. You guys just left Detroit. Um, I'm looking at video, and I, I kind of peeked my head in the show itself. Looked like you guys were treated well. How was your stay in Detroit? I know you was only here for a hot second, but how was your stay? Uh, lovely. The piece is really nice. Uh, we had a great time. You know, we performed there at the Detroit uh, Florida City Casino. Audience was great. Um, no complaints. You know, I think we hope hopefully everybody enjoyed the show. Man, it was it was great. Like I said, I am biased because I am a fan. And when you hear when you hear the hit, when you hear the hits, and you hear the new stuff. You just kind of like you get in superstar mode. Um, but as of as a whole, how's the tour been going? Uh, tour has been going well. I, we uh, we've worked hard and been patient. This is key. We've been patient about our approach to uh, broadening our show and adding content um, to make it more personal. And I think uh, judging by the um, performances throughout the country that we've been uh, we're being received well. I think people are feeling very warm and fuzzy about. Uh, the content, and, you know, we, we entertain. And that's the signature part of what we like to bring to After 7 Music is that when people come and see us, we entertain them. Uh, and we try to exchange our energy, your energy, and everybody feels pleased with a, with a great feeling about the presentation and hearing, again, the new music along with the old music. Hey, I'm glad y'all brought that up. When you talk about the new music and the old music, you guys have been together for quite some time, and you guys have recorded in uh, the late. I'm not trying to date you. This is all facts. But you guys have been recording in the late 80s, 90s, and now. How much have the landscape of the recording industry has changed? You know, from when you first started to where we are right now. Uh, significantly, I'd say. Uh, but you know, it's like a for us, it's about. Uh, teaching some of the old dogs new tricks. <laughs> and sometimes old dogs want to learn the new tricks they're doing. So you you uh, have to try to find a, uh, a happy balance, if you will, uh, between uh, what, you, what you knew when you came into the business and trying to learn how to utilize some of the tools that they have for recording today. But, you know, nothing, nothing takes the place of, you know, good hard work, uh, patience, you know, and, and taking the time to get it right. So, you know, uh, no matter what, whether it was uh, the late 80s or here in the 2000s, we're going to do what we got to do to get it right before we put it out. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. And, and quite honestly, I mean, like, you guys have been around. You, you Like you said, you're you all heads, and we've been right here with you. Uh, what does that have to say to your longevity? I mean, you guys... Personally, I can only say this personally, but every cookout, fish fry, family <laughs> reunion, um, anything where there's more than four people 
if you wait long enough, an after seven song will play. What does that have to say to your longevity? <laughs> <laughs> That's real. Yeah. I mean, I heard you guys at a wake. At that point, yeah, it's real. <laughs> I mean, it's an honor, man. I, you know, I, anytime your music is played around people that love each other and having a good time, and you know, uh, it's an authentic moment, man. And, and they play music. So That's the music that is most important and, and that lasts the longest, usually, man. So. It's an honor. I don't. I really know how to answer that, but <laughs> you know, it feels good. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing, just your longevity. Uh, one thing I would like to talk about because it's so, it's so cool because you guys have got a chance to, for lack of a better term, refresh your audience. I mean, like we talk about the time you did, but there's always a new person in the over 30 years you guys been doing this there's some there's you're waking someone up to after seven and when you do that like you have a new fan base but now your fan base is different age range you got young kids i mean like even at the soundboard at the soundboard i saw young kids i saw older people and i saw people kind of like myself like right in the middle um where does that what is that? How do you guys feel about that when you when you see that your music has spanned different generations? Well, this is Keith again. Um, a lot of that goes back to the writers, uh, Babyface, Daryl Simmons, L.A. in the far past. Um, we've always, you know, sang about love and relationships, and they were always married with rhythm and melodies that uh, hit your heart and hit you from all different angles. And it, it's kind of ironic that uh, promoters, Al Heyman back in the day, uh, they, they found a way to put After 7 on a uh, show with uh, MC Hammer, put After 7 on a show with uh, Patti LaBelle, uh, with Whitney Houston, uh, Frankie Beverly, uh, The Whispers, uh, Regina Bell. So we, we were spread out. I somehow infiltrated different age groups. And uh, so we, we have a history of being able to brand our sound with different age groups, but it, it's a tribute to the lyrics, of course, and the performances that are heartfelt performances where we're expressing kind of maybe our emotions about a particular uh, song, but so many people can relate to our feelings and our interpretation of that performance. So... When younger people hear it, they can respect it and feel it just like the older people who fell in love with it. And we created, uh, you know, relationships with our music and things that was going on in their lives at the time. So it's kind of continuum. You know, that is what time music is. It's that music that hits you no matter what. Preach. I mean, I mean we're, we're in love. Like, if we played one night, which was one of the first songs that we recorded, and we don't listen to one night for 10 years. When we put it back on the radio or put it back on a box, it sounds as fresh like we just left the studio for, for ourselves as that fresh. So uh, we, we can appreciate why fans do fall in love with the sound, but we're just privileged that we've been branded by such a talented you know, family. Um, and a group of singers. This is me. I get to sing with, you know, Melvin and Kevon and uh, Jason, as well as uh, having baby girl Simmons, uh, that they know what we do, and they continue to put that brand of the old music and the new music. That's real. Like, um, everything you just said. One thing I want to touch on, and I'm sure you guys have been asked this a billion times, so I'm just going to kind of speed through this, but, like, Way back in what I like to call the day, like when after seven, when you when you dip your baby toe in the water, there was always this like, for lack of a better term, stigma. Oh, that's just baby face brother. Uh, let let's just let's just humor him to some degree. Oh, that's just oh they just they just that. But you guys 
have been able to s go so long and step out of the shadow of Babyface and all the people that, you know, kind of championed you at that time where you guys can go off and do your own thing, where you're not, like, having that underscore. Do you guys look at that as just kind of like a, like a I, w I want to say badge of honor or 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 a chip or an accomplishment, or is it just kind of... You know, business as usual. Uh, just, you know, I, I think we just uh, have always looked at it as a family, you know. Um, Face opened the door here in L.A., opened the door for us to give us an opportunity. But it wasn't long before we were kicked out the nest and, and told to go fly. Because, uh, you know, on our first project, it was L.A. Baby Face and Daryl Clinton. On our, uh, our first album that we were, by the time the second album came out, Three years later, uh, they had created LaFex Records, we were on Virgin Records, and we were left, if you will, to our own devices to kind of figure out how to fly at this point. And um, without, you know, oh, that brand. without the, the, their production that, you know, that was so critical in terms of establishing who we were. Um, so, yeah, you know, you will always have a big piece somewhere looming in the background because he has such a huge footprint, but, you know, he never stopped being proud of what he's accomplished. He still continues to grow. He still continues to extend his arms wide uh, to his family. Uh, and so, you know, it's just all love. Ain't, 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 no, ain't nothing bad in that right there. It's all good. Because at the end of the day, it's his music from the past, yesterday, and today yeah. that, that brands us and gives us the ability to do what we do. We 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 work with other producers, but trust, you know, the, the privilege to sing their music is truly a, a benefit, and that's why we're able to have four top ten singers off the time is out. That's real, and I'm glad you brought that up. When we talk about Timeless, man, man, I know that's your latest project that has a lot of acclaim to it, mainly because there was this, I, I guess, grouping or a gathering of people past, present, and future After 7 fans who got a chance to look at that. And quite honestly, the story I heard behind this, now I got y'all on, you know, I could talk to y'all. Y'all didn't plan this. Y'all just showed up in the studio and then timeless happened. Please tell me about that. How, how did that work out? <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, well, it was... I don't know. It was just... It just became a... a a subject that got discussed, got thrown out there about, you know, hey, you want to try something? We, we can try to see if there's a, you know, if there's any magic. Let, you know, let's, let's stick our toe in the water and see if there's anything real with, uh, you know, with Ashley Seven. I mean, and, and really, I think it all happened because for the first time in these many years, my brother Melvin said he was willing to come back to the, to the table in a, in a recording mode and, and, and do this collectively together. So when he did that, it, it, it really kind of solidified the possibility for this opportunity. And the first song that we cut turned out to be the first single that we released, I Want You. Uh, and when we finished this song in the studio, we gave uh, Kenny's engineer, Paul Bootin, Time to go ahead and shape it up and just put it in some kind of some kind of form, clean it up and everything. So when he did that and came back into the studio and listened, uh, I think we all were kind of just <laughs> we were kind of blown away. We we did we couldn't believe what we heard when we heard it when it was all put together because it, it sounded as though the sound the signature sound of After Seven was still very much intact. And how does that happen? away for 20 years we couldn't explain it. who does that right who does that right? that's real you guys it, it really felt like um you guys just took a long break it looked like all when y'all got back together all the gears was in line you guys stepped back in and y'all cranked out a banger of an album i mean like a lot of acclaim, a lot of awards, a lot of mentions. There was like, oh, After 7 is... I, I, and I say this glib 
but it this is what it was. It was like after seven is back, and I'm like, okay. I mean, I'm just saying this as a fan. I'm like, okay. And there's a piece of it where like, did they ever really leave? The way this sounds, did they ever really leave? Because that. You guys have got there. After Seven has different incarnations, different members filling in, but you guys never really officially broke up. It's just sort of like y'all all met up, but it was this is the first time we got a chance to hear it on a new album or a new project. Right, right. I agree. I'll take that. I'll okay. That. I mean, but first, first off, first of all, foremost, you know, um, we know <laughs> we know where it all began. I mean, we may have stepped up to the plate and, and, and delivered what we knew how to do, but the real blessing is that God allowed all of this to happen in the first place. And that's what we all know. Um, we can't, I, I can't tell you why or how, other than just that, you know, we're here uh, really simply because God allowed some things to happen. He, he allowed a lot of things in order for this project to come together the way that it that it has. So we never, we never forget uh, who our source is and, and why, you know, why we're getting a chance to have uh, this kind of experience at this season in our lives. You know, it's, it's truly a blessing. It, man, I, I'm a listener and I, I only think I say amen to that because you guys have been doing it for so long. And speaking of doing it for so long, you guys, when you first started, you guys were uh, teenagers. You guys didn't really know. I mean, you guys didn't know. You guys didn't uh, you did. you know what the world had to offer. <laughs> you guys were. That's just, that's just real. And we, we, uh, we, really, we, we really weren't teenagers. No. We, really we, we looked like we were teenagers. That was another blessing from God. Oh, well, black don't crack there. There we go. Oh, oh okay. I was under the impression. That, uh, that, that, that cosmetic visual that, uh, you know, you, you think we was teenagers. Oh, thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank thank you. You. There we go. <laughs> no, we were, 30, we were 30 years old at that time. Really? Yes, sir. No, you yeah. wasn't. Yes, we were. No, you were. <laughs> like. This is the truth 411. Yeah, there you go. Wow. Okay, yeah, that okay. just derailed my next questions. But, <laughs> um, at the time, you guys, the, the way I looked at it, you guys were, like, stepping to your own. But now, you guys are, and correct me if I'm wrong, at any time I'm wrong, uh, you guys marry, you guys have kids, you are fathers. Uh, possibly grandfathers. Right. Right. Yeah. Like, I, one thing I love asking is, do your kids, in some cases grandkids, do they listen to the music? Do they do they just look at you guys like, oh, well, that's just granddad being granddad. That's just, that's just, or is it, do they rock with it too? Can they honestly listen to an After 7 record like how they would listen to anyone else? Or is it just kind of like, oh, okay, that's just, that's just them doing their thing. I, I think all day. Uh, I can speak to my, I speak my chair. My, my tribe, this is a <laughs> My tribe gets with it. Yeah. Keith, my daughter certainly gets with it. And my grandkids get with it. They love it. They well, sing it. Speak up, Jay. Uh, what do you have? My, my daughter is the case. My daughter don't get two cares. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you old, and stop dancing like that. <laughs> this is nature of the business, man, because I love asking that question because no answer is the same. Sometimes the kids and the family with it, and the other ones are just kind of like, oh, you're embarrassing me. You're embarrassing That's me right. on a national stage. That's right. That's my daughter right yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Stop, stop. <laughs> yeah, it, it would be weird, you know, and quite honestly, if, you know, someone's on a date and then your daughter hears you singing and they're looking at someone up, no, turn that off. Turn it off immediately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some it's tells fine, me you've she, been down that road. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She, she gets embarrassed any time, but I throw it on extra and make sure she can get extra embarrassed, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, put it on! Yeah, I'm with that. She loves it. She loves her pop, so you know, it's all good. 
right, we wrapping it up, but I got two more questions. I have to ask this. Uh, this is me selfishly asking the question. Are there any more After 7 projects in the future? I have to ask that question because I want to be first in line to get it. We, 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 we would like to think so. You know, we're, uh, we're, working, we're working towards, you know, some uh, other opportunity. And, you know, uh, uh, I would say it this way. Uh, man, man doesn't stop what God's talking about. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so since we've been blessed, we know that we, it, 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 it wasn't else we decided that this is it's going down this way. Um so I, I believe that there's still more in store uh, for after seven in our future, and what we are going to be able to, uh, you know, bless our fans with uh, rolling into 2019, 2020. So I would say, yeah, it, it's reasonable to expect that if there's something coming down the pipe. Um. And lastly, I got to ask, there's some young heads, there's some old heads, and there's some in-betweens listening to me talk to you right now. Is there any advice that you can give someone who just want to get out there and do what you guys have been doing so well? Uh, any advice you can give? Hard work. Hard work. Yeah, stay at it. Don't give up. Just keep going. It don't happen overnight, even though the industry may make you think it does. Go so at it like it's a ball, it's a marathon. It's not a, it's not a sprint. And uh, don't skip the steps. You know the steps to growth and, and maturity. A lot of a lot of music maturity has to do with personal maturity and, and experience in life. And don't skip the steps thinking you need to get rich by twenty five or you know whatever it is. That, you know kids, kids may think today um, you got time and music lives forever. So keep going. I understand. It is not easy. Okay. So don't think don't think you're getting into something because you love it that it's an easy way to go. It's not. It's going to take everything that you got to get there, even more to stay. Right. That's what that's what it calls for. And piece two cents is to remember that getting an education, um, high school, college, grad school, those are all lanes that you can still be in them lane and get into the creative lane well and a lot of what we've learned comes from the educational side because you need to know business if you're going to be in the music business you need to have some business background so it all blends together no matter what it is and there, there are talented artists that have degrees I, when I look at the guy Tommy in the movie uh, Power this brother was in ballet. Mm. I'm just saying, who would think that a, 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 a actor with, with his talent was, you know, jumping around in, you know, in tight? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just saying, but the walk of life that took him into ballet has led him into film and music. So, but it all comes from training. It all comes from education. So, again, you know, whatever you get into, don't just stereotype this is what I want to be and go after doing one thing. Be the type of person that wants to learn any and everything you can get on your eyes, in your brain, and into your body. Because we never know how God will use you. So it's about talent. There you go. That's right. And guys, I want to thank you so much for just giving me a little piece of your time. Um, I got a ton of questions, but I know you guys are super busy. Uh, we're going to uh, fade out this interview. Is it cool if I play a couple of cuts from After 7? So if there's anyone yeah. under a rock who doesn't know who After 7 is, they can learn from this interview. That's right. Yeah. Play that, play that brand new one called Five. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. I will. And thank you guys so much. And um, thank you so much. And you guys have a great tour. Appreciate it. Right. Thank, thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much for calling in. All right, peace out. All right, bye.